Hey everyone, so today we're going to be doing a product review together and the product that we will be reviewing is the Hourglass Vanish Seamless Finish Foundation Stick. Um, so this is the box that it comes in. Looks like this. And then this is the actual product. And I have the shade Linen, which is described as a very light um, shade with a warm undertone. Ignore this crazy hair of mine today. I just washed it. So it's not listening. Um, I also it recommends that you use the Hourglass of Vanish Foundation Brush. It's called the Seamless Finish Foundation Brush by right? Hourglass. And I've had this for a while. And I actually really like the brush. It's like a flat top kabuki brush. And it has like a little lid on it. And you just slide that guy down. And it looks like this. So it's like an angled, really dense kabuki brush. I have to say that I really like it. I haven't used it with the Hourglass foundation stick yet, but I have used it with other foundations, and it does a great job of blending things out. So I already know I like this, and I figured I would try the foundation stick with this brush since it's recommended by the brand. So first, let's go over the foundation itself a little bit. We'll do the packaging. Um, the brush and the foundation stick do have the same finish, which is nice, um, same color, same finish, and it just is very, very minimalistic packaging. So it just says hourglass, and then you open it, and it is a twist off. You just twist the product up. Looking at the product right now, it looks a little bit too dark for me, and it is very, very warm. So hopefully, it'll match. I'm gonna test this out all day. I'm gonna go to work, come home, and then check in with you guys, so we'll see how it lasts. So a little bit more about the foundation. It is very pricey. It is 56 Canadian dollars for 0.25 ounces. Now, you don't get very much product for how expensive it is. So we're gonna see if it's worth it. Um, I'll read you a little description about the product. So it says it is a full to medium coverage, and that is good for all skin types. It says that the finish is a satin, matte, radiant, natural finish. And it claims to be a long wearing foundation with the coverage of a concealer, the fluidity of a liquid, and the weightlessness of a powder. It says that it has double the amount of pigmentation as a normal foundation. It also says that it's full coverage for in one application. It says it's long wearing, waterproof formula provides 12 hour coverage and innovative technology adjusts your body temperature and effortlessly blends into the skin. Okay, so I just put my hair up and we are going to apply the foundation. And the way that I've seen this applied is that you use stripe, the, yeah, stripes, strips, stripes, stripes down your face, across your forehead. Okay, so I'm gonna twist the product up once and see if that's enough for our face. It's actually like one and a half. Okay, so I'm going to start on one side of my face because I don't know how fast this is going to set. So I'm just going to do one, two, three strokes. One across my chin, around the sides of my nose, on my nose, across my forehead, this one. And my skin is incredibly dry right now. I have visible dry patches on it, even though I just exfoliated my face right before this. So we'll see if it clings to my dry patches really fast or not. Okay, so I'm just going to blend this in downward strokes only because, like I said, my face is really dry, so I can't really use circular motions like this use downward. And prior to this video, I have moisturized my face. I didn't prime it. I usually use the Becca Backlight Primer. This product claims to be radiant already. Okay guys, so I finished the rest of my foundation without recording it by accident. So that really sucks and I just shared a lot of thoughts and opinions with you guys. And that also wasn't recorded. So, let me see if I can recap. Um, I really like the way the foundation looks so far. I said the only places that I can really notice the foundation is my chin. It's accentuating a little bit of the dry texture and around the sides of my nose. Um, I really love the way it's sitting on my cheeks and on my forehead 
and I love the coverage of it. I wouldn't even add any more. I think I'm going to just so you guys can see how it layers just like on my cheeks. I have a little spot there. And it is quite a bit darker than the rest of me. Um, so I just blended it down my neck. So far I really like it. So let's add another little layer on my cheeks. And then we'll see how that goes. Just do one small stripe. One small stripe. Hopefully that was even because I was doing that out of the viewfinder. Just to see how the foundation layers. So I really love how easy this is to blend out. It's already blended out. Um, so I definitely would agree with the claim that it adjusts your body temperature to make it easier to blend. I would definitely, definitely go with that. Really like it. It didn't take any of the other product off or like spread it around weirdly. Like it just layered on top of really, really nicely. Personally, I think that I probably wouldn't layer it. You can see, you can't see the spot on my face anymore though. And it's like very, very flawless. Finish without setting out with powder or anything, I would definitely say is Radiant. It's not the most natural foundation to me because I normally don't wear this full coverage of foundations, but for it being like a very full coverage foundation, I definitely would go ahead and say that it's quite natural. So I feel like I didn't use that much product because it's so full coverage. Like I could have done with a lot less around my mouth. I feel like I have too much foundation there. And I'm gonna go finish my makeup and we will check back out for that. Alright guys, so I just finished the rest of my makeup. I did a really simple look. I just threw on some um, setting powder, some blush, some bronzer, and a little highlight and some mascara. And that's about it. So, a couple things to add. So, I love the way the foundation looks on camera from about a foot away from the mirror. But when I get really up close, I feel like it is you can just see how dry I am. I would not recommend using a beauty blender with this. I would definitely use a brush because I went and used a damp beauty blender just around the sides of my nose because I could see a lot of product there. And it like lifted the product up. It was like just sitting really funny. So then I powdered and then finished my, my makeup. And it was still like, you could definitely still see the foundation so I wanted to set it. So I set the foundation with my Urban Decay Show Makeup Setting Spray. And I feel like you could just see every everything on my face like you could just mostly the dry patches like you can't see any pores on my face or anything like that I felt like it didn't really settle into my pores but you could definitely see like along like in my t-zone because that's for some reason where I'm most dry right now so it looks beautiful on my cheeks and it looks beautiful from far away but up close you can really notice the foundation like I feel like it's too cakey for my liking. Those are my thoughts for right now. Initially, after I finish the foundation, I would give it about a six and a half, seven out of ten, just because of the way it's sitting on my face right now. I'm sure it would look beautiful if my face wasn't so dry. So it's potential to go way up and become a favorite. But in the winter months, I'm gonna say for everyday use, it's no. Um, but I'm gonna keep wearing it. I'm gonna go to work see what it looks like at the end of the day, if it lasts as long as it says it's going to, and yeah, I'll talk to you guys in a few hours. Bye guys. 12 o'clock midnight. Hey guys, so it's been nine hours since I last talked to you. I just got home from work, and I'm just going to go over a little bit how the foundation looks. So looking at it in the viewfinder right now, it looks really nice. It looks flawless looks just like it did before. I really am not liking the way this foundation looks. I don't know if it's because my skin's so dry right now. I got I have such mixed feelings about it. I'm so confused. When I got in the car, it was a natural light. It looked really, really pretty. And when I got to work and there's fluorescent lights, I absolutely hated it. And I know fluorescent lights are obviously a lot harsher harsher to begin with, but um right now looking at the foundation up close, I really, really dislike it. It is separated and super cakey all here, up around my nose, my forehead, my cheeks don't look so bad. It has accentuated every single pore, every single mark, every single line on my face. And it has broken up all my nose, all around my nose. And it's not even that it's like clinging weird to dry patches and making me look more dry. It's just 
sitting on top of my skin so weirdly. I've never seen a foundation look like this. Based on that alone, I will not wear the foundation out again, especially if it's like work. Let me see if I can get in a little closer and show you. I don't know if you guys can see how it looks around my nose right here. This is so up close and personal, it's ridiculous. So anyways, it's broken up on my actual nose, all here. And I just feel like here you can see it so much, and I don't know if you can tell. Like my forehead between my eyebrows, ignore that my eyebrows don't look that nice right now. But I just feel like you can see everything. I'm going to say the foundation has nice coverage, so I'm still going to go with that. It was still easy to blend out. wouldn't wear it personally on an everyday basis. It's not my thing. I mean, I don't love the way it looks on my skin. I really, really hate when you can see foundation on my face. I just feel like all night I was like so worried that people were looking at the foundation on my face like you could just see it. I will say it doesn't feel like I have foundation on my face still, which is really nice. And like I said, it is a very expensive foundation, so I personally wouldn't recommend it. I don't think it's worth the price tag, but since I have it, I am going to find a way to use it, even if that just means filming with it. Because looking at it right now, I really like the way it looks, but if I go stand in front of a mirror, I absolutely hate it, so I'm really torn about it. And that's just my opinion. It's obviously the unpopular opinion that I've heard so many people rave about it, so I'm going to try it out, like I said, over the month. And maybe you'll see it in the monthly favorites, maybe I'll find my favorite way to use it. But overall, I'm not the biggest fan of this foundation. I'm definitely going to give it a second and third go. See what I can do. But as it is, thumbs down. Alright guys, so that's it for today's video. If you liked it, give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And hopefully we'll see you guys again soon. Bye! My dog is itching herself. Are you done? I just recorded for five minutes the rest of my face and it wasn't even turned on. Tell me this is a lie. <laughs> is the mic even on? It's not good at all, so let me just thumbs down and pause it. Okay, fine. This is really gross, so I can't even turn my camera. My elbows are also double jointed. In case you're wondering, a little funky box about me. Why do I always wave like this? This is not how you wave. This is a wave. This is a finger. This is. If you liked it, give it a like. <laughs> if you liked it, give it a like, really.